Hi, in this video, I'm going to explain the difference between an NVR and a DVR. Here I have an NVR, which is a network video recorder, and over here I have a small DVR digital video recorder. The primary difference between the DVR and the NVR is that the NVR runs on IP, so it uses digital transmissions between the camera and the network recorder. The DVR traditionally uses analog transmissions. Right, having a look at the back, I'm going to use the back plate to explain the difference between the two units. This is the NVR, this is the DVR. The NVR uses digital transmissions. It requires the use of Ethernet cable. Ethernet cable looks like this. It has RJ45s on the end. The connectors that are used to link the cameras look like this. Here are some samples of RJ45 connectors. The cable used to wire the IP cameras for the NVR looks like this. You can see there are eight wires or four twisted pairs. The cable and the connector are wired together and then we use a crimping tool that looks like this. On the camera side, you can see that the Ethernet cable plugs in like that. So all the wiring takes place using Ethernet cable. On the back of the NVR, you might find additional ports for your cameras. These are PoE ports. PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet. So if I plug in my Ethernet fly lead like that and I plug the other side into my camera, that is actually all I need in order to power up this camera and communicate with it on an NVR. The DVR is different. It uses these type of connectors that are called BNC connectors. The cabling is also different. Over here I've opened the jacket of this coaxial cable. The name of this cable, as I said, is coaxial cable. All it is is a signal wire over here and then a jacket of earth and sometimes a foil. So in order to connect these analog cameras, I only need two wires, the signal and then the earth. Right, over here I've got an analog camera. There is the BNC connector. So I would need to plug that in like that and build a cable up. There you can see the connector, the pin and the ferrule. And this would be the one side of the cable, which could either plug into the DVR or the camera. The tool used to make BNC connections for the analog cameras looks like this. So when we have a look at the analog camera, we can see that the connection is much simpler. It is just two wires. I'm only connecting the signal wire and the ground wire to the DVR. Now when we have a look at the analog camera, we can see there's this additional connection here, which is for the power. All cameras require power. For the analog cameras, they've got a standalone connector, which needs to be wired to a DC power supply, usually 12 volts. So analog cameras require power supplies that look like this. Each camera has a DC jack which needs to be wired to a power supply. The power supplies may be big or small. This one happens to be able to feed 18 cameras. Each DC jack would be powered up by one of these circuits. 12 volts would be outputted here, feeding into the analog camera, allowing it to have power. So that means that for the DVR, even though you've got the camera and the DVR, if you plug the camera into the DVR, nothing will happen until you connect it to a 12 volt power supply to power up the camera. So that means in order to get an analog camera system working, you'll need the cameras, the DVR, and the power supply to feed the cameras. For the NVR, as long as you've got ports on the back of the unit, when you plug in your camera directly into the back of the NVR, the camera will power up and you don't need any additional devices. However, not all NVRs have sufficient ports at the back of the unit. For example, this is a 16-channel NVR, which means I should be able to get a maximum of 16 cameras connected to this NVR. But notice there are only 8 ports here for my cameras. That means I have to find another way to feed my other 8 cameras. Over here, I have a network power over ethernet switch. This particular one has 24 ports, which means I could effectively add 24 cameras to the switch. This switch provides the camera with power as well as the signal transmissions taking place here. So if I plug in my camera to any one of these ports, it will power up the camera. It will also allow the camera to communicate on the network. However, in order for the communication to take place, I also need to plug in my NVR into the switch. So over here I have my NVR and there is the network connection for the NVR. So I would plug in the NVR into the switch like that. So now what it means is I can plug in eight cameras over here and feed them directly from the NVR, powering the cameras up directly. The other cameras can be fed to this switch directly. The signal data will travel from the switch out this Ethernet cable and into the NVR input over here. 
Now you may have noticed that the DVR also has an Ethernet port. The reason why it's got an Ethernet port is the DVR still needs to have network access. So if your DVR is plugged into your network, you can then connect to your DVR from your cell phone or computer, and then also you can then have your remote view working. The core difference between the NVR and the DVR is that the DVR's cameras do not need any network access. You can see these are analog links, while this over here is a digital link. So that means that inside the DVR, it's converting the analog video into digital which is then recorded on the hard drive, also accessible on the network via this Ethernet cable. The NVR, on the other hand, when you give it network access, you can also have the remote viewing, meaning you can watch live streams on your cell phone or computer, but if your cameras are connected to a nearby switch, you will have to have a link from your NVR to the switch where the cameras are connected. Both the NVR and the DVR can output the video footage onto a monitor. For example, here on the NVR, I can output it to a VGA monitor or an HDMI monitor. The same is true for this analog DVR. There's an HDMI monitor option and a VGA monitor. There's no difference in terms of the NVR and the DVR in terms of these features. Both recorders have USB ports. The USB port allows us to connect the mouse and on some recorders allows us to add a hard drive. In terms of audio in, the NVR has the option for audio, so does this DVR. Although the NVR is far superior in terms of dealing with audio because audio can also come through the signal cable. So if your camera has audio enabled, the audio can travel with the video in a digital format directly into the NVR. So all the channels can have audio. While on the DVR, you'll need to have specific audio connections for each channel that you want audio to be present. So for example, there's only two audio inputs here, which means that only two channels will allow me to have audio. I won't be able to transmit audio over the traditional analog link. Now having a look at the cameras, it's very difficult to know which is a IP camera and which is an analog camera unless you look at the connections. For example, the IP camera has this connection. There's the ethernet connection, so I know it is an IP camera. The analog camera I can see has got the BNC connections and therefore I know it's an analog camera. Now the analog camera requires the DC jack to be plugged in and this connected to a power source in order to enable the analog camera to function. Without this power source connected, the analog camera will not work. The IP camera can work just by having the ethernet cable plugged in. If this side of the ethernet cable is plugged directly into the NVR or to a power over ethernet switch, that is sufficient to power up this camera. When it comes to the IP camera, by just plugging in the ethernet cable, I can power up the camera. As long as the other side is plugged in directly to the NVR or to a power over ethernet switch. However, if you do not have a power over ethernet switch, you will also then need to use the DC jack to power up the IP camera. That is why IP cameras do come with this additional jack to power up the camera if you do not have a power over ethernet switch. Some people use regular switches and those switches only allow the signaling. It, it does not power up the camera and therefore they would need additional power cables. Therefore it is highly recommended that if you're using IP cameras, rather use a power over ethernet switch. It saves a lot on your cabling. In terms of the resolution and the clarity of the picture, the IP cameras are generally better. So while analog cameras are much cheaper, there is a range in terms of their best use. For example, a 2 megapixel analog camera is usually much cheaper than a 2 megapixel IP camera. Over here I have a 4 megapixel camera. When it comes to higher resolution cameras, 4, 6 and 8, the IP cameras are the best options. It is uncommon to find high resolution analog cameras. Generally, the size of the camera does not have anything to do with the resolution, but it, this camera is much bigger, but it is still a two megapixel camera. What you will notice is there are more infrared LEDs here to light up a larger area. This is also true of the IP cameras. Over here, we have a basic setup for the DVR system. This is the analog system. You can see that the cameras are connected directly to the DVR, as I showed earlier in the video, and that all the cameras require an additional power source in order to operate. If you would like to configure your DVR, you need to connect a monitor to it, and then you would have your mouse. 
If you would like to have remote view or remote access to your DVR, you will need to connect your DVR to the internet. So therefore you would need to connect it via router. Therefore you can then interface with your DVR via the internet in order to enable the remote view. Each camera connects directly to the DVR. If you'd like to see the camera's live view stream, you would need to have a monitor which is connected to the DVR. In this case, you can see there's a monitor here. However, if you'd like to see the live stream directly from the camera, then you would need to have an analog connection on your monitor. And that analog connection would have to be an AV connection. That is not common on normal computer monitors. You would need a dedicated TV monitor. Some TVs have the AV input where you could connect the camera directly to the TV. Generally, analog cameras do not have SD cards built inside where they can record and save the data. Thus, for analog systems, all the intelligence sits in the DVR. Looking at the NVR system, we can immediately see there's a difference in how the cameras are connected. Yes, the cameras can be directly connected to the NVR, but in most cases, especially on larger setups, we connect the cameras to a power over Ethernet switch. You know it is a power over Ethernet switch if it says power over Ethernet or it's got yellow markings on it, often saying PoE. The beauty of the NVR system is that it can be accessed directly from any computer. So I do not necessarily have to go via the NVR to view the camera's footage. I can connect the camera to the network and then just have a local computer and that local computer can actually log directly into the camera because each camera now has its own IP address or address. This is an intelligent system but it is more complicated to set up. Because the cameras are far more intelligent, they also offer more features. A lot of these cameras can store data on the unit. Some of them have SD cards. They can even perform some recording. However, ideally, it's best to have the NVR on the network and the NVR gets all the data which it then stores on the hard drive and provides you with additional features. These features include tripwire, people monitoring, people counting, facial recognition. Some of these features are built into modern NVRs. In order to configure your NVR, you will need to connect a monitor and a mouse to the NVR to configure it. Once it's configured, any computer on the network can actually locate the NVR via the IP address and if you have the credentials, you can log in and also configure the NVR. That is also true of a DVR. Once a DVR is set up and put on a network, any computer on that network can also access the DVR and if you have the username and password, you can affect changes on the DVR. If you'd like to have remote viewing and access to your NVR and the IP cameras from the internet, from a remote location, you'll also need to connect your switch to a router which allows you to connect to the internet and you can access and configure additional things on your NVR or the IP cameras. This part over here is very similar for the DVR or the NVR. The main difference on the NVR and the DVR is how the cameras are connected, the protocols which the cameras and the DVR and NVR use, and then also, as I said, the IP cameras have much better accessibility because once they're plugged into the network, anybody on that network can actually access the camera, obviously with the username and password. So that means that when you've got an NVR on a network, you do not have to have the cameras very close to the NVR. If you've got another switch maybe 100 meters away, as long as these switches are linked to each other, I can add cameras to this switch and this NVR over here will still be able to see those cameras. These are just some of the differences and there are many more. Although I said the NVR provides so many additional features, it does rely on the type of IP cameras. So intelligent video surveillance or IVS is a feature which is available on NVRs, but the cameras also need to have this enabled. Thanks for watching and cheers.